for all of the history up until this point, our communication structures have, for the most part, especially mass media systems, have been very top-down. And they've been controlled by a few people that had distribution control. If you look back, the church was really the first broadcast network. The church built out a very defined architecture of communication that was coming from a centralized place where very few people could have the word of God come down to them and they had the ability to transcribe. This was at a point when literacy was very rare and so you had only a few people that were literate that could transcribe this, this holy word. And then they would distribute it out to a local market where you had a big impressive building that had lots of iconography and lots of beautiful images inside of it and the tallest building usually in the town and they would ring the steeple at you know 8 a.m. and we would all congregate for mass and we would listen to one message from one incontrovertible truth uh, from one source and that's not too dissimilar from television architecture right you have a group of people in suits uh, in New York or in Los Angeles and they're deciding what's going to be on television and then they distribute it to those towers and at 7 p.m. prime time we aggregate around a television that's been brought into our home and we watch this one incontrovertible truth and this signal from a top-down approach. And when the internet started enabling people first with this underlying network architecture of TCP IP that allowed us to transcend time and distance, that allowed any node on the network uh, to contribute to the system. And then we started seeing things like video sharing and photo sharing uh, that allowed us all to become publishers. And then we had this kind of, now this layer of social that has, is redefining everything where every single person is now a contributing node on the network and every person that is part of that uses emotions and memes and content to distribute things in a horizontal fashion. And so what that's doing is, is that is destroying the ability to discern what is authentic, what is not, what's real, what's fake, what's uh, commercial, what's non-commercial, what's sponsored, what's non-sponsored, what's a good idea versus a bad idea. And so when we exist in this free-form society where every node on the network can contribute something to the network and it has no checks and balances, if you will, there is no top-down authority that's editing it or, um, or deciding what's, what's real or not, then suddenly it becomes every node on the network's responsibility, real having to learn a pattern of behavior that we are all responsible for the propagation of this content. Because the one interesting rule is, it's very difficult to make a mass media statement in a cellular holonic structure nodal network because you have to get a bunch of people to agree to share it and agree to propagate it. No big media company can buy their way into the system anymore, right? But at the same time, every, if everyone's on a balanced playing field, then people that are hackers or people that scam the system or people that you know, kind of arbitrage the new ad features that emerge or decide to take this path have an advantage over some of the tried and true institutions, you know, especially in things like the context of fake news that's been happening a lot. You know, the idea that a bunch of Macedonian teenagers that are arbitraging ad dollars on Facebook's system can put hundreds of stories into a network that people believe, these fake news stories, when a New York Times or a Wall Street Journal refuses to pay for play in a system like Facebook. And so you have this great imbalance because we haven't learned yet how to uh, we haven't taught ourselves yet how to discern what's real and what's fake and how to look at sources and how to, you know, how to, how to see them for what they are. And that's also because of a lack of transparency. We're living in these systems now that are controlling our ability to disseminate information and we have no transparency whatsoever when it comes to algorithms. Why does content behave this way? Why one day when I post something do 500 people does it reach and the next day only five people reaches? And so until we have visibility into that system and into these algorithms, we're gonna be at a bit of a loss and a bit of a kind of grabbing in the dark, uh, trying to make sense of this new communication architecture. You know, I quote Aldous Huxley, 
who you know, paraphrase and basically says, you know, the only part of the universe you can possibly control is yourself. And now more than ever, that kind of social responsibility is, is upon each one of us, right? Because we're now we're in a holonic system, right? And, you know, a cellular holonic system that we are all responsible for the propagation of the right information, positive information, negative information, fake information. You know, we're all responsible for it, right? Because we're all part of a metabolic factor inside of the system. You know, the sharing of these memes is propelled by emotions. So human emotions are the metabolism of this system. And you can tap into human curiosity and human, you know, the whole range of emotions from, you know, anger to laughter to, you know, desire. And, and so we're seeing that played out in real time right now.